Hello, welcome to uh, e Election 360. And uh, on this segment, I am here with uh, Ivo Greenstreet, who is the presidential candidate for uh, the Convention People's Party, CPP. You will know that he contested the last elections, and the CPP overall had less than a percentage point. And so going back into 2020, what's going to be different? What is the CPP's uh, uh, game plan going to be? I'm here with uh, Mr. Greenstreet. Nice to have you, sir. Nice and you. Uh, it's great to have you. So your, your party uh, has not been doing too well. <laughs> I have a boat to pick with you. I, I think I was watching you in, in the introduction, mm. and uh, you were saying it's a tall order. I don't think it's a tall order. Mm. And let me give you just some um, uh, enjoyable examples. Mm. Just recently, Barcelona played a soccer match, didn't they? And they lost 8-2. Mm. The great and mighty mm. Barcelona lost 8-2. So there is nothing and, and, impossible. And what, and what happened? I think mm. Luis Suarez has left the club, and all kinds of changes are going to be instituted. Oh, the great and mighty always fall at a point in mm. time. Empires rise and mm. they collapse and fall. Nothing stays forever, especially when the people. Is it your view that the great and mighty well, are about I, to fall I, I, I under so. the CPP? And, and, and if, you, if I give another simple example, the pe people li like these kind of simple examples. I think I remember watching a, a documentary on Usain Bolt, mm. and uh, he was running in the 2004 Olympics or whatever it was, and he came last. He came last in the race. What happened in the subsequent uh, games that he attended? So um, mm, but, but, it's about but what you, you do. You don't, uh, don't you agree that the game of uh, politics is extremely entirely different? Entirely different. From Obviously, these the examples that I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving. And so uh, it is to is to let people keep an open mind. Mm. Is let people understand that is why we have the slogan or the theme that we have chosen: mm. a vote for CPP is a vote for yourself, because Ghanaians have to start voting for themselves. Ordinarily, when they go to the polls, they go voting thinking, oh, you know, um, who is going to win? Is it uh, NDC or is it MPP? Mm. Uh, where should I cast my vote? Uh, really, they should cast their vote for themselves. Because if they examine their situation over the last 27 years or go, what have we had? We had eight years of uh, what was called, is it probity, uh, accountability, accountability, transparency. Mm. What happened? Mm. We had eight years of so-called golden age of business. Mm. What happened? We had eight years of so-called better Ghana uh, and what we have now. And, and really, those mm. things have all been, should I say, you know, may and we, we have slogans they're, they're, like they're, they're, Ghana they're, they're beyond aid. to keep people, mm. you know, interested and convinced that they will do something. But in the end, what happens? Uh, all the promises end up being vain promises. All the hopes end up being dashed. And so I believe that the time is ripe for Ghanaians to look within, be brave, and vote for themselves. And a vote for themselves means a vote for better opportunities, better opportunities for job employment, better opportunities for all the things that this nation should be providing its people. And that can only be done if we now find a real alternative. Because actually the policies of the Convention People's Party and those of the NDC and the MPP who have very, very similar policies are entirely different. They're complete alternatives. Mm. The CPP is a socialist party. But, the but, CPP is an incrumized party. The thing is that you've contested the elections before. Of In course. the last elections, you didn't of even course. get up to 1%. My brother, um, uh, uh, Nana Dankwa, mm. contested three times mm. before he became president of Ghana. Professor John Evans but he didn't, Atamil he didn't obtain, contested three times. They didn't obtain 1%. Of course, of course. but the, there was an increase in mm. CPP's vote, mm. although marginal, mm. from the 2012 elections. And just because in this life you fail once doesn't mean you shouldn't try again. Otherwise, why would so, anybody So you have... acknowledge you failed the CPP in 2016? Of course, but I didn't succeed. So why are you coming of back? Course I, because I believe I have the capacity, I believe I have the expertise, I believe I have the vision, the desire, and the dream to transform not only my party's fortunes, but the fortunes of this our great nation. And that is why I'm presenting myself in, in all mm. honesty and uh, humility to um, uh, engage in that task to capture the hearts and minds of the people of Ghana. But, but not everyone uh, thinks the way you're thinking, that you're the best person for this. In fact, those who contested against you, some of them accuse you of corruption. They say you sold your party how, how, to how, the how, NDC, how, 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 for how, example. How many people contested um, uh, uh, Nanado and, and Tremating when they went to the University of Ghana in, in 2008 or whenever it was? Those are 17 people who felt they could be president of the Republic of Ghana. That, that nothing precludes human beings who aspire for great things to offer themselves to lead their nations. That is why they're contests. 
If that were not the case, then why don't we all sit in our rooms and decide on who we think is the best to lead us but, and not have any contest at all? But why do you think members of your own party will have such thought about you, that you sold all, your party all, all, to all, the all, NDC? All things, all things um, uh, occur and come out of situations when people are defeated. For instance, in the last election, what so happened? These are disgruntled what, 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 people. What, what happened? What happened when uh, His Excellency Nanado Dankwa Akufuado was made the presidential candidate of the MPP during an election year? What happened? Let me remind you. He cleared out his own elected chairman and elected general secretary, Paul Afoku and Kobnada. What cleared out? Politics things happen. But he Sometimes won. for internal. But he won. He won. Actually. He won. But I'm saying that you are, you are talking about instances of yes. differences and uh, different perspectives and problems within political parties. Otherwise, we would say that how is it possible that a great and very strong and dynamic woman who has contributed so much to Ghana's development, and in actual fact was the first lady of the founder of the NDC and of Ghana for so many years, after contesting with a, a, a candidate to become a presidential candidate of the NDC, she also left to go and form her own party, does that mean she has nothing to offer Ghana? She has a lot to offer Ghana. There are different ways we can all make ourselves available to offer our, our goods. So, I mean, there are good people in the NDC, there are good people in the NDC. But the point is, if you look at their policies and the prescriptions and the programs that they have been following and their capacity to deliver results to the people of Ghana, they are being clear failures. They themselves ought to be the first to admit it. So, so what would you say? I'm sure that uh, going into uh, a new election, you may want to take stock of what went wrong in the past. Oh, so I'm sure you know, and you can tell us what contributed to the CPP's abysmal performance in, why, why, in 2016, why, why, and why, what are you going to do to change that? Why would you want me to tell you, tell you all our, our, our secrets and all mm. our strategies? But however, yes, since that, that, that time, but people been, are watching, you know, and they course, form impressions. Course, so whatever you tell course, me as your weakness course, and how course. you plan to solve it will have a lot since, of impact since, on people since, who will make a decision since that, to vote for you. Since that time, there's been thorough reorganization of the party at the polling station level, mm. at the electoral um, uh, area level, at the constituency level, and at the regional level. Why do you think it is that a party like the Convention People's Party, which has... Um, the greatest achievements and history of respect for women in this country. That two women were not appointed, like being appointed a running mate of a, a particular party, fought hard against men and others to become the elected chairman and leader of the party in, in the person of the daughter of um, Sapong Kumakuma, that is uh, Nana Frimpoma, and uh, the general secretary Nani Ajanta. So it, it shows you there have been many changes that have taken place within the, the hierarchy of the party, which has brought new energy new dynamism, new ideas, and a renewed hope that has led the rank and file to say, look, let us, let us try again, let us try harder, let's employ new strategies and new ways. And that is precisely what uh, we are engaged in. The time is short, but we believe we will utilize that short time very, very effectively and take advantage of how disgruntled we feel the people of Ghana are about those who have steered the affairs of this nation during the intervening period. And I am not the one saying that. Survey upon survey upon survey says that people are tired of the NDC and the MPP, and they want a complete change in a new direction. And we believe that the foundation and the policies and the principles of the Convention People's Party represent that. The historical mission that was begun by the founder of the party, Usajafu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, whose 21st September falls next week when uh, we will be celebrating him as the founder of modern Ghana. And, and the journey that he began, which is still relevant today, about how Ghana and Africa exist under domination of um, foreign forces. But that's about alone, how that they, alone cannot win you elections. Of course, of course, of course, that alone cannot win elections. Mm. But let me, let me give you, let's, let's dovetail into some areas. Yeah. Economy, education, let's look, let's look, let's look at the economy. Mm. There's some interesting things that have occurred over the last two or three years. I think at a point in time, either it was the senior minister, uh, Osafo Mafo, or it was uh, the president himself, Nanadu uh, Dankwa Kufuad, His Excellency, who was in Dubai. I think it was a senior minister. And, and they praised him in Ghana for having exported through Dubai $7 billion um, dollars worth of gold. And uh, you know, I think he was surprised and alarmed. When he came back to Ghana, and uh, there were some interactions with the 
Precious Minerals Marketing Corporation, which is the body which oversees um, those exports, they only had evidence of 2.3 billion on the receipts. Therefore, a gap of about $5 billion worth of gold. And you know the law in that sector requires 80% repatriation of those monies. So it, despite the fact that CID, I think at the time, were trying to investigate about 100 or 145 companies as to where um, that money had gone, nothing has ever come out of it. But that shows you the vast extent of our wealth. It shows you the vast opportunity that that wealth could provide this nation. And that has led to us looking at some key things in our manifesto about how we would manage those resources so that we could generate far more funds, not for individual profit or for the accumulated profit of a multinational, but for the profit of a nation, and therefore social profit. And that is why we are socialists and incrumeists, because we use the wealth of the nation for the benefit of the collective of the people. And so, um, uh, in, in terms of the gold, we would be looking at retaining about 3 to 5% of those um, uh, gold that were produced to increase the amount of reserves that we as a nation have, about, have, have of gold, which are currently, currently is only about 7% that we retain as reserves at the Bank of Ghana. We would wish to increase that um, uh, amount to 30%. And if you're able to do that, as in China, Germany, Russia, the United States, they're all increasing their gold reserves. Number one, that allows you to ensure the stability of your currency. It ensures you are less tied to, to the dollar. And, and those are the fundamental things which allow you to establish what you may find. I, 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 I reckon from that example that you uh, might not share the same uh, idea or strategy of hedging our uh, mineral resources like was done in the Ijapa deal, which has become, uh, which has been very, very well, criticized I, I, for I, I, its implementation. I, I, I am, I am a, a, a lawyer. I have a lot of expertise in, in legal aspects of international finance. I have no problem with swaps and futures and international financial instruments and selling forward and all. We have done many of those things with our resources before. In this particular instance, I think the, the situation is different. Where we are, are focused as a, as, a, as a party is the fact that we would um, renew and take a look at the nature of the contracts we have, uh, particularly in that gold sector with those multinational corporations. We would intend to renegotiate them because for us that is the greatest height of bad governance. When multinational corporations and with willing governments, which are both the NDC and the MPP, allowing us not to receive the amount of revenue that we should be getting from our God-given resources. Can you imagine the gold fields in Newmont as a consequence of stability agreements that both NDC and the MPP agreed to? NDC, MPP agreed to it with a Newmont transaction when Kofor was the president. N NDC agreed to it with the gold field stability clauses when Mahama was president, whereby we only earn 1.7% of royalties from these companies from our gold. I mean, those are unconscionable contracts. Those are contracts which should not be allowed to exist. We would insist on fighting for far more from those um, royalties. Apart from that, they have ridiculous things like year upon year upon year of special tax reliefs. We don't offer the same tax reliefs to our own um, local companies, our own indigenous businesses, which are the companies that require support, and those are the areas that CPP would concentrate on. Mm. But let me finish the point I was making earlier yeah. um, uh, uh, about, about the gold reserves. You see, Switzerland has uh, about four of the largest gold refineries um, in the world. That is why it's actually the world's biggest gold trader. Ghana actually now is the largest gold producer in Africa. What indigenous and creative ideas are we utilizing to make sure that we take ad ad advantage of that? And those are the things that... And the CVP and the, your leadership will provide that. Because we believe in Ghana first. We believe in utilizing the resources of this nation for the benefit of its people, mm, so not I, for the benefit I, I of individuals. I want to actually take you away from there a little bit too, as we have started talking mm. about your strategies in the economy, etc. So use that as an opportunity for you to assess this government. I mean, you're going into an election to definitely with the view to kick out the, the sitting government. You must be able to assess whether, in your view, they've performed well or could have done better. What's your assessment of the MPP uh, government under well, the well, leadership well, of Akufa? Well, when, when you're going to make an assessment of um, a, a, a party or a government, you know, it has to be based on, on, on some criteria. Uh, and so let's look, if, if we're going back to the economy again, as we were discussing just now, 
You know, um, a semblance is created now, almost as though the economy or economics is a special subject which only experts should be discussing or looking at. And it's, it's, it's a very clever way of making sure that people don't venture into that area. Meanwhile, people comment on all other sectors um, and, and, uh, and are allowed to give expert views. And when you study economics, you, it, currently now people would claim that actually what you're studying is economics. It is not. It's called political economy. That is how the subject has always been studied. When you study economics, it's called political economy. Therefore, your view of the economy is a political construct. It is based on your ideas, your philosophy, your beliefs as to how you are going to craft economic policies to go in the direction that suits your policies and programs in terms of what you wish to achieve for the people of Ghana. So they have brought something like, um, that they have called one district, one factory. And I believe these actually are cottage industries. I think these are, are, are good initiatives, but not, don't go far enough to be able to achieve the purpose that we want to achieve for our what nation. Would you, what would you call because, far because enough? Because far enough requires you to have in, an intentional, not leaving it for the, for the market to just operate, for people to decide what they're going to do. If they, they can do that, the private sector want to do that. But if the government want to achieve something, clearly they want to achieve far greater employment for the people of Ghana. As at now, that has been a failure. There has not been creation of far greater employment for the people of Ghana. But the government 40, says they've created two Napco million and all jobs. those things, that is just um, poppycock. I mean, just the uh, stories. If you look at the, 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 the amount of unemployment between the ages of those between the ages of 18 and 34, it's at about 45 to 50 percent. And it's highly alarming. That is a security risk. And so that is why I go back to the fact that in response to that, you have to have a, a, an intentional industrial policy. You have to mobilize government surplus, surpluses. You have to control capital inflows. You have to institute a form of import substitution. You have to have export studies. And you have to have an intentional... you have to have an intentional desire to achieve it. Because, for instance, it is only through failure, actually, that you can craft out potential different directions for success. So, for instance, under the last, we'll tackle NDC next, but after the, last, uh, uh, the previous MPP government, the so-called golden age of business, if you remember at that point in time, um, His Excellency President Kufo, a very nice man, um, introduced, introduced something called President's Special Initiatives. Mm. Wasn't the current Minister of Trade dealing with something called cassava, uh, cassava um, uh, somewhere in Bodra Asin Centre? What happened to it? Did it fail? If it failed, what did we learn from it? Why did it fail? That was an attempt at an industry. But the present special but initiative I, but was I under but it, but, CPP's Papa but, 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 at the but, time. But, but he wasn't handling it. But he was a failure. He was part of that failed government. That's why he was rejected later or maybe left the CPP. We can come to him again later as well. But right. at the same time, another MPP stalwart, um, uh, uh, Kwame Nabar tells, wasn't he part, part of the president's special initiative on salt? What happened about it? Where's the research? What did we learn? Why aren't we developing these special salt resources and tying it to a petrochemical industry? What are we doing it? What's the strategy? That's why I'm talking about an intentional industrial policy, mm -hmm. a matrix that looks at our comparative advantages that we have around the country and utilizing them with state assistance and state intervention to make sure they work. And people should not be afraid of that state intervention. Right. America, the United States of America, which Mr. now claims to be... We'll need to take a break. I will okay. return to this conversation. I'm Steve Renty, and we're exclusively uh, speaking with Ivor Greenstreet, the flag bearer of the CPP. They're talking to us about strategy and what uh, will be different under the CPP government. We'll explore more of those when we return. Please stay with us. Women are the backbone of our families, the force in our workplace, the peacemakers in our communities, the glue that keeps all things together. We set the standards. We are game changers and we are a powerful force. Hello. My name is Michelle Atto and I'm your new host on Today's Woman. On Today's Woman, I bring you strong, 
powerful, influential women from all walks of life. Are you ready to be entertained? Are you ready to learn? Then if you are, join me on new episodes on Today's Woman right here on TV3. Today's Woman shows Sundays at 3 p.m. and repeat on Fridays at 3 p.m. on TV3. Brought to you by GTP Still Timeless. First National Bank. Fit Trip. Kessa Tresaco, Electroland Ghana Limited. Right, uh, welcome back. And I still have Ivor Greenstreet uh, with me. So, Mr. Greenstreet, uh, we were talking economy, but the MPP and uh, uh, the leadership of Akufuado, uh, Dr. Baumia has touted the achievements of the, uh, their party. Inflation has been down. Before COVID, they were doing single-digit inflation. And so do you, don't you think that this government has done incredibly well compared to other governments in stabilizing the economy the extent it is now? Uh, no, no, nobody would uh, come out to say that um, uh, uh, this government has done nothing mm. or, or that the previous governments also did nothing. Uh, but the point is, well, what are our aspirations? Mm. And have they done as much as they claimed uh, mm. they would do? You think the, these the, achievements the, the, being the, touted are mediocre? Well, um, uh, I would say mediocre is, is being over-complimentary. Mm. You know, uh, the, the, the vice president himself, another excellent man, uh, I remember recently listening to him on a, on, a, on a TV program when he was talking about affordable uh, housing. housing. And uh, uh, at a point in time, he made a, a comment, which I, I was very happy he made that comment. He said, oh, you have all these affordable houses, but, but they're not affordable, and nobody can, can access them. And in his words, he says, that is a reflection and an indication of market failure. Market failure. Therefore, in the same sense, if you have vast swathes of your people who are also unemployed, that's or, market, that's it failure is market too. failure. Mm -hmm. So these are ideas, these are political constructs. So therefore, we have to develop a construct that will be able to tackle the deficiencies and provide solutions that are applicable to our circumstances, as other nations have done. And their little gimmick of this rent loan is just like a charity or a female wearing perfume to make the room smell nice. It doesn't solve the fundamental problems that exist. And let me so, go back so, to give so you this. So you're saying that the government's let, performance let me go back on to the give economy you the, is the, mediocre? I said, I said calling it mediocre is, is over-complementary. So you can interpret what that, my right response to that means. Look, a country like Singapore, mm. which ordinarily we would assume is just a um, shining free market um, economy, it's just business, business, business. Not that business is bad, business is good. Singapore, 90% of the land is owned by the state. 85% of housing is provided by government-run national housing corporations. 25% of their GDP come from state-owned enterprises, of which, surprisingly, you will find to hear that Singapore Airlines is one of them. I'm not saying that all we need to do is go and copy Singapore. Or, or Japan. You're or saying the that the state could play a bigger role yeah. than it is playing and bring more prosperity to, to the people. A different variety of capitalism. We have to have alternative mm. socialist policies and incrementalist policies the Convention People's Party represents. And in any case, the ordinary Ghanaian should say to themselves, why should I waste my time after trying for 27 years on these characters? who all they come is come with stories and promises, but end up serving their own self-interest, serving their own family's interests, serving their own party's interests, before the interests of the people of Ghana. So before even saying that the CPP is a wasted vote, they should recognize how, that voting for NDC and NPP is a wasted the vote. citizens trust the CPP, which itself doesn't have a united front. But the first thing And your fortunes have been declining the, since the, uh, 2012. The, You've been losing members of parliament. There are those who say you should focus on that, the, get the, members of parliament, and strengthen your base rather than seeking to form a government, a the, presidential the, government. Those are all important perspectives. But the first thing a citizen should say is that there is no point in me voting for a failure again. There is no point in me voting for MPP or NDC again. And then decide, okay, 
what does the Convention People's Party have to offer? But because I need, is the, is the CPP, I need an alternative. Is the CPP the alternative? Number what, one. What, what will your the message convention, be? The How convention, different will your message The Convention be? People's Party mm. is the only authentic and permanent and legitimate guardian of incremised and socialist policies in this country. And it is only those policies, my brother, believe me when I say this, it is only those policies that can rescue this nation and provide the kind of common wealth for the people of this country, common opportunities for the people of this, kind of, uh, this country, not the kind of situation where we have now mm. 50 to 60% of people living in urban areas who live in a single kiosk. One in four girls getting pregnant before the age of 18. Five million people existing without toilets. Why don't the great NDC and the NPP tout their achievements in that? They're always listing their so-called achievements in infrastructure. But I think Those are all the, the, the duopoly of the, CBP, uh, the NDC and the MPP has its own effects on our political discourse. But the CPP, if you want to be an alternative, people should see you as credible. Your party is, is breaking down. Some of your last two uh, presidential aspirants, they've left the party. Dr. Papakwasi Indium left the party. Uh, Dr. Abu Sakara, uh, it's, it's not certain whether he's still a member of your party or not, but it's assumed he left. So any, any, I'm any, saying any, that any, your Ghanian, party hasn't shown. Any the, Ghanaian mm. who would observe the trajectory of someone like, say, Dr. Indu, very successful businessman, mm. very hardworking, very intelligent, but would look at it and say, okay, this man only became a minister in an MPP government because of the CPP. Your thinking is that this he's, man only he's became, CPP influence? He's this, this, MPP influence? This man only became an MP in 2004 because President Kufour withdrew Nana Atu Atha, mm. not because people of Elmina wanted Dr. Indum as the president. MPP withdrew to offer him that seat. This same man, who was a minister for eight years in Kufour's government, then decided to contest as a presidential so, candidate. So you're, I'm coming, you're actually I'm giving him less prominence I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, as, a, as a CPP I'm just party member. I'm just about then. to land. Mm. Okay. He became the candidate for CPP in 2008 after the party, mm. which gave him so much prominence and opportunities okay, to, to achieve all of those great things with all his skills and capacities as an individual, what did he do? He ditched the party. People should make their own assessment of that. Right. Okay? And then why another party will be formed with a similar name, PPP? Why another party will be formed with a similar symbol, some kind of red blotch? And why a campaign slogan will be CPP is dead, vote PPP? People should make their own assessment of the nature of you, that you individual think, think and he, why that individual will do that. the CPP in order well, to form his own people relevance. People should make the their PPP. own assessment mm. of, of why that should be the so case. So let's okay? shift attention yeah, and, yeah. and talk about corruption. Yes. Uh, this government, uh, prior to the elections, promised to set up the Office of the Special Prosecutor, promised to be tough on corruption. The indicators we have is that the Special Prosecutor's Office has not exactly uh, been uh, out and about prosecuting high crime as uh, its mandate. I want you to uh, assess what you make of the fight against corruption from the perspective of how far the MPP has done and what your party will do different if you get the chance to form well, the well, next government. Well, well uh, as, a, as, a, as a lawyer myself, and uh, um, uh, Martin Amidou is a senior uh, lawyer to myself, and many years more call to myself at the bar, mm -hmm. and we all know what a contribution he has made, both publicly in his statements against um, perceived acts of corruption by the former government um, and the NDC, and the principal stances he took at different points in time, which I'm assuming are, are part of the qualities that uh, endeared him to the current president to, to nominate him for the role that he's in at the moment. I don't know, uh, as an institution, what support that institution has been given to enable him to effectively carry out his mandate. And when you are going to prosecute someone or investigate someone, they are innocent until they are proven guilty. And so therefore, and until it is made clear what um, uh, his challenges have been or um, uh, the failures to provide him with the tools to carry out his work, it would be very difficult for me to just sit here and lambast him for being yeah. a failure and yeah. incompetent yeah. And, and therefore. But I think right at the beginning of the discussion, when we were talking about gold and the missing five billion, that shows you that the level of corruption, the level of loss of our resources in all spheres of our institutions and state is all pervasive. We have seen investigations into the judiciary, corrupt. We have seen investigations into the academia, selling of 
and past questions and sex for grades and things corrupt. We have looked at what has been going on, worst of all, with our so-called religious leaders. Corrupt. Corrupt. Is, is the MPP government corrupt? I am saying that uh, this is a situation of the human being. Okay, you can't identify to one particular government. The MBP, yes, it is corrupt. There have been instances of corruption. I think even the president has had instance to sack some people or make changes in his government. Same thing in the NDC, same thing in the former MPP and elsewhere. So clearly, far more has to be done. Mm. Far more effort and attention has to be given to solve the problem. But worse form of corruption than that, than our own petty corruption, should I call it, of our own government officials, is the corruption of the forced contracts or contracts that we've allowed ourselves to engage with multinational corporations. If a multinational corporation is only letting you earn 1.7% from your gold resources, that's a corrupt right. contract. It's an unconscionable right. contract. Mm. It's a contract which is intrinsically sick mm. and has to be changed if this nation is going to move forward. That is a real form of corruption. The biggest bad governance it's not the problems we have with our civil service and our own leaders, but the bad governance of the economic situation we find ourselves in with these organizations. So we have to unite as a nation with alternative policies offered by the CPP to change that. And that is why a vote for the CPP is a vote for yourself. I you can no I, longer I, waste your votes. I quickly want to touch fees. on the filing fee set by the Electoral Commission. Uh, there are those who say that 100,000 is quite on the high side. And if we have time, I'll take a flashback to uh, you uh, giving a solidarity message at the NDC's um, uh, Congress, and uh, we'll move from there. But <laughs> first, I want to hear your view on this filing fees. Well, you see, you see number one, um, uh, the filing fees are determined by a public institution which exists for the benefit of Ghanaians. And I think we have had calls in our, in our private discussion when the break was on to lament about Ghana being a multi-party democracy, actually being a duopoly. Yeah. And therefore, things that are done which somehow prevent the ordinary Ghanaian being able to participate in the political process help to further deepen that duopoly and make it far more difficult and for other you think alternative. This is exactly what the EC well, is seeking I, I'm to going do. to I'm going to say that it's, I'm going to explain why it is not just the CC. In the last election, 2016, if you remember, 2012, the filing fees for parliamentary candidates were a thousand Ghana cities. When we, as a party, were planning in 2016, we thought, okay. EC, Ghana, things go up, inflation and all the rest of it, maybe it will go up 100% to 2,000 Ghana cities. Or let's, let's have an outward projection, possibly 300%, 3,000 cities. It went from 1,000 cities out of the blue, if I may say, to 10,000 Ghana cities per parliamentary candidate. An increase of what? 1,000% without notice. Mm -hmm. And this is where I come to a public institution. Has certain duties... And one of those duties is not to abuse right. discretion. And they abuse their discretion. So if EC on this occasion had an intention to increase the filing fee from 50,000 to 100,000, why to didn't it start discussing it six months ago? The, oh, and my fellow um, parties, this is what we are thinking of doing. This is, our, this is why we are doing it. Please right. engage uh, us. Mr. Mr. Green Street, I know we would love to have this conversation, but I want us to take us back to the... Uh, 2014 or so Congress of the NDC when Ivor Green Street had to uh, give a solidarity message and we'll wrap up with that. On behalf of the Convention People's Party, we wish you well at this year Congress. Especially, we pray that all of you here present will have a safe journey to your respective homes. It is an important day for the NDC. Important that you emerge stronger, better, and united for a better Ghana. The reason you have to be stronger, better, and united for a better Ghana is that currently nobody, I mean nobody, N-O-B-O-D-Y, nobody is feeling your better Ghana. Continuous doomso doomso, corruption from top to bottom, left, right, inside, out, and all the challenges you are facing that is suffocating the Ghanaian people. 
we would have thought that perhaps you may have used an occasion like this to discuss policies, programs and solutions to all the difficulties we are facing at the nation. But no, you chose today to share your Christmas gifts with each other. Ghanaians are not happy at all. This blowing air is dry, too, too dry. So, the most painful thing of all, the most painful thing of all, is that you don't care. Your NDC, continue. We are watching you. Ghana is watching you. Do what you want to do. We also know what you will come and do. So, as I wish you well to elect your executives, make sure you elect executives who will be able to steer your party's affairs when you are in opposition. I wish you a Merry Christmas, Afishapa. Boys are breath. Boys are breath. All right, so uh, this is interesting. Uh, your views there, I must say this was very brave and considering that you were right in the thick of the action. Uh, looking back, do you still hold the same view of the NDC and whether this has changed or you feel that the current administration who took over from the NDC hasn't necessarily done any better? And boys are, bro. <laughs> you see, the same, the same thing that uh, happened to the NDC with their overconfidence and they are running the state of the nation for their own personal benefit without caring about the people of Ghana. It's the same thing that the mistake that the MPP are making now. That is why the MPP are going to be cleared out. But the most important thing is not to dream about bringing the NDC back. That is a mistake Ghanaians should not make. They're tired with the NPP. Don't dare for a moment think that bringing the NDC back will solve your problems. Look for alternatives. Be brave. Be brave and courageous and look for an alternative. Mm -hmm. And that alternative is to give the NDC and the NPP an electric shock. Mm -hmm. They deserve an electric shock. You need to change the status quo in your lives and in the life of this nation. Right. Mr. Grisham, we're grateful to talk to you and uh, it's Always been a pleasure. wonderful having a, an interesting conversation. Ivor Green Street is the flag bearer of the Convention People's Party. I'm Stephen Enti. This is still uh, Election 360 on your Election Command Centre. We'll be right back.